Welcome to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green, where you'll discover actionable strategies to help your student to reach their academic goals, to excel at standardized testing, and to plan for the college admissions process painlessly. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Green. Hello, everybody. Dr. Stephen Green, the success doctor. Welcome back to the Make the Grade podcast. This is episode three. Focus of today's discussion is maximum education, maximum education. And as I mentioned prior, this is the third in a series of three podcasts, which discussed the three main services and available ways that make the grade may be able to help you to help your child to reach their goals. So let's, let's, let's get right into it today. Maxim Education is a title of a book that I wrote and published. Uh, It's actually officially called Maxim Education, The Ultimate Guide to Optimal Academics. The purpose of the book is very simple. I want to give you and students better ways to manage your time, to manage information, and to have a daily action plan. I'm going to talk about some of them today. They're all in the book. Uh, but I'm also going to talk about some case studies of how people have used them and have had some great success with them. But the idea is this is all about taking action. This is all about doing things, not thinking about doing things. This is about doing things. So number one, time management. Students, people in school, one of the biggest complaints I get in my tutoring business my academic support businesses. We just don't have enough time. I need two more hours every day. So many students get up early. They go to school. They're in school till two or three or four o'clock. They go to a practice for sports or club or band or gymnastics or whatever. They get home at 630. They've got three hours of homework. They're exhausted. They collapse. And then they wake up the next day and do it again. So tenant number one is time management. The way I'm going to suggest with time management is number one, you have to have a way to do it. A lot of people now have gotten away from notebooks and pencils and paper and the sort of old school having a diary, a place to write things down and they do it online. So for the purposes of today's discussion, I'm going to kind of assume you can do it on paper or online. I may make specific references to one or the other, but either way, 100%. You have to have a place to get everything in one place. There are several examples in the book. I, I unfortunately can't show them uh, on a podcast, but so we do, I call this calendaring. The time management piece this is one of them. So what we do is we get a document and on the document, we list all the classes, all the work that's required in each of those classes. That's fine. But on top of that, we now prioritize it and we say, okay, When is this due? Is it due tomorrow? Is it due the next day? Is it due the day after that? And we work with it that way. So now we are, A, getting all the information in one place. Two, saying, okay, what do I need to do first? What do I need to do second? What do I need to do third? What do I need to do fourth? More importantly, when is it due? And what would be considered completed? Because I've worked with people who do the homework, but then don't turn it in or they don't submit it or whatever the, the breakdown is. Now you can calendar a lot of different ways. The, the simplest one is to do it on a daily basis. So we'd have a single sheet for this that you would work on on a daily basis. So every day, one of your first tasks when you come home from school or even during school a little bit, if you can, would be to, to create this document or update it from the day before. You can also keep weekly and monthly calendars but the, the idea is, and I, I get, get way, way more into this, but for today, get everything in one place, prioritize what it is and when it needs to be done, and then block out your time and get to work. It's simple, doesn't sound that complicated, but just doing it and doing it consistently makes a huge, huge difference. So tenant number one of maximum education is time management. Number two is information management. It's fairly obvious that somebody in school has a lot of information they need 
to handle. Some of it has to be memorized. Some of it has to be organized. Some of it has to be accessible when they need it. And this is sometimes a challenge for people. And, and the harder and the more advanced your classes are, the more and more challenging this can become. So one of the things that I teach, and one of the things I'm going to tell you about here is how to manage this information. Some of the ways most people already understand are things like outlines or flowcharts or concept maps. And depending on what the information is, you're going to organize English differently than you're going to organize math, and you're going to organize both differently than you would organize, say, a foreign language. So everything's going to have nuances. But to give you a takeaway, because it's always my goal, is typically an outline would be an abstract of something you had to read where you're taking the most important information or you consider priority information, which basically is saying something you expect to be tested on, and you're bringing it out of the original material into a place, an outline, where you'd be more accessible and you could get to it more quickly. And that's basically the idea. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can make an outline. The traditional one, you have one all the way on the left, and you have indentations and sub-indentations, things like that. Um, I can show you much, much more creative, visually based ways to make an outline. There's one called a table and leg style. There's a, um, a web style. There's circular outlines. There's concept maps. There's a lot of pretty neat things you can do. It can be the same information, but sometimes the same information just organized differently can be easier to learn or easier to remember. So we've got time management making sure your timing is appropriate for what you need to get done and your priorities are appropriate for what you need to get done. We've got information management, which is managing all the information, in all your classes, short-term, medium-term, long-term. And then the third piece is a daily action success plan. I guess if you want the, if you want the full name of it, uh, but that's putting it all together consistently every day. Success is the result of consistent effort. There's really no, no shortcut to that for better or worse. So every day, student manages the time well, gets their calendars together, lists their work, prioritizes when it needs to get done, plans ahead for future events, organizes their information, reshuffles it, outlines it, concept maps it, whatever, in a way that makes the most sense to them, and then does that every day in addition to planning ahead for what's coming next week or the week after. And this is basically the maximum education system. There's a lot of nuances to it. There's a lot of detail that I, I just can't get into in the scope of what we're doing today. But, but this is what I want to try to get you to understand. So why would, a, why would a person consider this? What's the value? Well, as I got to before, sometimes there just isn't enough time. Sometimes you got 26 hours worth of work in a 24-hour day. Also, sometimes the work is just difficult. The sheer volume. Um, I have students taking a, multiple AP classes who just, just can't get through the information that they need. And I have people taking lower track classes who just can't do the work quickly enough. So there's an efficiency piece here that can also help you as well. And, and these are all things that we address and work on and improve. Now, the goal here, the goal always is to create independence with the student. Once they have the systems and once they have the management of it, and now they can break away and work independently and, and, and just be basically, the goal is just to become the best student that you can be. So let me talk about um, just a couple of case studies. And there's a bunch of them in the book. So I'm, I'm going to just quote a few of them. And, um, and, and kind of just give you some ideas. So the first one I'm going to talk about, and this is what the parents said to me. So my daughter's always behind in school. Just is. Just can never seem to catch up. When they look at her grade report, the report card, she's always missing homework, which hurts the grades. And they feel like it's not that she doesn't understand how to do it. She's just not doing it or not getting to it. So basically... When I started to work with this student, the first thing we did was make a list of everything. I mean, everything it had to be due and when it was due. And lo and behold, there were, oh yeah, I forgot that. I was, I was discovering things that she needed to do that weren't on in her notes. Now, 
obviously it's difficult to do an assignment that you don't remember that you have to do. So I was able to figure out in the first week that almost a third of the homework she wasn't doing, she never wrote down or remembered that she had to do to begin with. So that's an easy thing to correct. It's an awareness thing, but it still had to happen. And, and secondly, because the, now we had a complete record of all the work, there was a lot less issues studying for quizzes, studying for tests. So the positive secondary byproduct was that her quiz and test grades went up because by doing the homework and handing it in, she was much better prepared for the rest of the material. So this was more of an information management and a time management thing. Uh, the daily action was doing it every single day. Now, that was a, actually a high school student. I want to talk a little bit. I just want to get to it in the, in the book, so I'll make sure I quote it properly. Um, I want to talk a little bit about another case study. And here we go. This is a, a university-level person, somebody in college. And this was a person I actually worked with in high school and did well. Went to a really competitive college and um, called me halfway through her sophomore year. She said, I'm just overloaded. I'm, I'm doing things you're teaching me. I, I know what I need to do. I just can't seem to get myself to do it. So what she needed really was just accountability. She needed somebody to say, okay, let's sit down and do this. So for 15 minutes every day, we would connect, and this was done online. She was in college uh, 500 miles away at the time. And we just went through, hey, okay, let's give me each course. What's going on in this class? 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 When is it due? How much time do you think you're going to need to accomplish that? And we got everything in one place. Then she went to work on it. Now, again, this may or may not seem like a big deal, but, but it's so much easier to get all the work done and get all the work done well when you know what you're up against. And, and the last case that I'm going to talk about is um, I had a student who was very, very into sports, played a sport every season, um, was, was being recruited uh, by some high profile colleges and universities to, to go on an academic scholarship or a athletic scholarship, sorry. And partly because sports were more important to them and partly because they just at the time, the grades started to really sag. And it got to the point where one of the coaches said to the parents, I, I'm not going to be able to get this kid accepted to the school, even though we'd love to have him on our team, because the grades just aren't there. And that was the wake-up call. And the student basically, now this was almost completely a time management concern. So what we did here was we used a weekly calendar. We got a big calendar, like a two-by-three-foot poster board and we made it like the side like monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and every day everything went on it different colors we color coded math i think was red and uh history was blue and so on and so on and everything got written on there and it was hanging up in his room where he did his work and as things got added to it or work got added it got added to it and as things got done it got taken off now he still um, struggled to complete the work and, and frankly didn't always do the greatest quality work, but his grades came from C's and D's back up basically to all B's because of his consistency, just doing everything, doing it on time, staying up. So little problems did not become big problems. And that's really the goal. That's how you put it all together. So you take a time management piece, you take an information management piece you take a daily action with the two of them, bring it all together. It, it's a recipe for, for success, consistent success. So let me, let me wrap up here and, and kind of just summarize what's, what's going on in the last few weeks. Uh, podcast one discussed academics and how academics are approached. It's an objective learning-based model and of learning what, where we are, what the assessment is, what the goals are, making a plan to do that. Episode two talked about how to prepare for standardized tests like the SAT and the ACT. And today, episode three, maximum education, basically how to study, how to manage time better, how to be a better student using time management, information management, and a daily action plan. 
as always, my goal is to give you, the parent or the student, things, actions you can do as soon as you get done listening to this or maybe even while you were listening to it to help you along this journey. I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. You can email sgreen, S-G-R-E-E-N-E, at makethegrade.net. You can comment on social media, Facebook and Instagram, both Make the Grade or wherever else works for you. But I really appreciate you listening and I appreciate you subscribing to the podcast. So signing off, Dr. Stephen Green, Make the Grade. Have a great day. Wishing you the greatest success and I'm here to help you reach your goals. Thank you. You've been listening to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe. For more resources and support, please visit makethegrade.net.